DC Comics a lot of credit because right here, for $7, I was able to get, yeah, Wiz Comics reprint. And it's one hell of a reprint, by the way. Is up my AKA Patters. I, I didn't realize we were recording. But hey, Peter A. DeLuca here, AKA Pad69. Say with me, known throughout Philadelphia, PA, you're up in the best multiverse as your eclectic one. And we're being eclectic today because I wanted to introduce you to an idea. I call it creating the stack, a stack of comic books. How's this relevant? How how does this flow into maybe a way that you should look into not collecting comics but reading comic books? Reading right is downwind from collecting. We want to read first, and then we decide how to get what we want to read. Sometimes, and even in this case, that involves reprints. I make this observation a lot. A lot of times, like just most recently, with Wolverine, Deadpool, kind of like getting the hype, marching into a theater, we get excited. Uh, we get curious. Uh, dopamine like flows through our veins. All of these things. And we may want to get into reading Deadpool. And I'm just using Deadpool as an example. And it's like, how do we truly get familiar with the decades that that character has been published, the milestones of that character, and the creators of that character. I went through this with Shazam Fury of the Gods, where a lot like for what led to Wildstorm Wednesday was me having kind of like a slow motion head explosion. Slow motion head explosion of what I didn't know. And because of that, uh, I got angry. Uh, when when I'm confronted with that often, and you guys, you know, with the with the library, I it's like something happens inside of me. I go deeper. That's what she said. I go all in on that, like whatever subject it is. And this subject can it can be completely, like you know, it can be completely opposite. It can be like so far off comics, but it could be very simple. Like for for example, uh, around this past Christmas, uh, I just. Yeah, I got upset that I didn't know how to make enough cocktails. So I got just obsessed with making cocktails, mixing drinks. And I've been doing that obsessively here. Well, not here, but <laughs> but here uh, since I had that revelation. And I'm not going to stop until I can uh, go into like any bar, order anything, or talk to a, any level bartender and like predict uh, what they might do. You know, like, and, and you might be like, Pete, this is crazy. What do you, how does this connect to Shazam Fury of the Gods? Well, today I want to show you guys the stack that it took me a little bit of time to get together for Shazam. And to further that, Shazam gets no traction, like no views. Like people just don't care about Shazam. But it's my obligation uh, to show you guys what a Shazam stack is because uh, in my view and in one time the view of the world before the world started to forget Shazam you know like Shazam somewhat memory hold already he's the most important character in comic book history and it's a little sad and depressing when we go through what that stack is to what is important and why Within the stack, I cannot show you all of Crisis of Inf Infinite Earths. The reason for that is, well, I, I think maybe t two other times I, I had the 12-issue the block. I think one other time I had their, like, original deluxe edition. Uh, it's all been, like, either sold or, or given away. Uh, I, but Crisis also, too, like, art-wise, I, I gave that to a, uh, a you know, like, an intern that was very interested in drawing and illustration. And I said, you know, like you, you should really look at George Perez because your style is like similar. Uh, to so like, you know, like it, it, the point I'm making, some of it comes and goes, but I only have two issues to showcase of crisis, but let's hit 
that drawing table, I want to introduce you to this idea because we're going to be also going through it like in the future with Black Panther, Guardians of the Galaxy, Blue Beetle. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. What's the... Oh, I'm kind of like loosely working on the Transformers stack. And I know there's so much like Transformer lore and information out there. Uh, but there's things of note. Uh, and I'll just leave that there. So maybe like there, there's an upcoming Transformers one. But guys, AKA Pad here. Thanks for hanging out. Let's hit that drawing table and get our warning started. AKA Patters. What does it take to get into a character? To know the arc of the character? Everything you see here, I've been building up and collecting since Shazam Fury of the Gods. On this channel, I long preach the importance of using, you know, some of these events, some of these movies, streaming shows, uh, even comic book events, right? To remind us of what we don't know, what we have to get into. But when Shazam Fury of the Gods came out, I said to myself, I said, holy crap, like I really don't have any strong positioning with the character. Well, all that has changed. I can now consider myself, and through my podcast, we've done the Shazam cartoon, we've done the Shazam serial, we've done the Shazam movies. So at this point, it's a complete media mosaic that we produced. But I want to show off the comic books. And I kind of want to explain what the path is. Now, I also recommend this. This is best with mid-size characters and franchises. Characters like Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men. There's a lot there. It takes a, more time and money to build a good stack. But let's get into it. Wiz Comics number one. We have to, in some way, read... And find the origin, the first appearance of the character. We we give DC Comics a lot of credit because right here, for seven dollars, I was able to get yeah, Wiz Comics reprint, and it's one hell of a reprint, by the way. First appearance. We take the first appearance and we get all the way into the modern age, guys. The Black Adam movie put really is what puts Shazam on the map. As of right now, the origin of Shazam is always intertwined with the first appearance or like the reappearance of Black Adam. Because Black Adam, in the story, Black Adam exists before Shazam or Captain Marvel. But now because of The Rock, the... They, they're intertwined. But we see here, you know, Shazam, we get to issue 28 before we even get introduced to Black Adam. P this is pre-Crisis of Infinity Earths. Pre-Crisis DC. So Crisis of Infinity Earths happened. And here, this is fantastic. I love, I love, love, love that Alex Ross, and we know he's a Shazam head. He put Captain Marvel on the cover here. Because this is, it's not a trinity. This is the true power set of the DC Universe. So when we get into the history of the DC Universe, what, and this is essential for anyone that really cares about comic book continuity and comic book history. But we go through, and I show this a lot on this channel, but we go through the origin of it all. We get into individual characters, teams, timelines uh there's very little and i don't know if anyone wants to comment on what they left out of this but we we do see that superman batman right they get their like big pages the sub characters the b-level characters flash green lantern aquaman right they get even here look captain adam But Shazam's featured in here, and let's see if we can find him right here. But Shazam gets a full page. He gets a full page for a reason. It doesn't quite hit. It doesn't quite connect. But post-crisis, we have... So getting through 
Crisis of Infinity of the Earth. It's up to you if you want to read those 12 issues, right? But let's just assume there's a consolidation. They merge all of the timelines. And we get our first big DC comic book event. We get Len Wein, John Ostrider, come on guys, John Byrne, the GOAT. And the intent here is to insert a new group of heroes and villains, new concepts, and basically the overall upcoming attitude of everything you can expect from DC Comics. Issue 5 here, highly important. Because it showcases Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. Yes. Like, we were reintroduced to the character to the proper timeline. Here he is. Now, we may want to know his origin. So, let's get into it. We get into a four-issue miniseries. From the pages of Legends. Now, we're interjecting... Everything. The past and present for Captain Marvel is updated and for a new modern audience. Black Adam comes in at issue two. Two and three. But that doesn't work out. So then we get the power of Shazam. This is highly adapted. From the original serial. The black and white serial. This bleeds into. And here we get a little bit closer. Right? Because this guy becomes Black Adam. So Black Adam always was like nipping at the bit. bit when it comes to how effective of a villain he really was. To me Black Adam is the perfect villain. No joke. This bleeds into its own monthly book, but that fades away. And then we get into Alex Ross. Alex Ross, who grew up with Shazam. Who owns a ton of... He owns, like, the original artwork of the Shazam t-shirt. Like, he wore a Shazam kid shirt. And he owns that original artwork. Alex Ross... Through his love of history, taps back into Shazam. He tries to do an animated series with Paul Dini. He he does all of his power, all of his influence, all his credibility. He puts on the line to bring Shazam into the limelight. That doesn't work. So anyone out there that has read Bone... If you guys, I don't know when this video will drop. I go through this in the video. Uh, everything you've seen here too has also been featured on videos. So feel free to go through the feed. Maybe we'll do a Shazam uh, playlist to help you guys out. Jeff Smith from Bone. And this is a great edition by the way. But Jeff Smith right here. Bone is considered you know, one of the greatest individual cartoonist efforts in comic book history it, Jeff Smith working on Shazam it seems to be a perfect fit because Billy Batson the kid the wonder the cartooning the cartoony like aspect that Jeff Smith can wield like the attitude of, of his line right but this is this is a hot mess I couldn't finish reading it I do consider this one of the biggest disappointments in comic book history. Uh, you don't care about the characters, the conflict. The, the concepts are iffy at best or confusing. Not quite there. So that comes and goes. And then we get into Jeff Johns and the New 52. So all of this time. Right? 1940. 1940, all the way into, what year was this? Let me, I just want to get the year right. 2012. From 1940 to 2012, we get a perfect introduction of Shazam in a modern DC continuity with what we like to call the New 52. DC reboots everything. So again, Shazam is there at a company-wide reboot. 
same as he was here for Crisis. And what Jeff Johns does here, look, he pulls in Black Adam right away. Black Adam's on the first page. And we have Gary Frank here. And the kid's a little bit of a D.I. He's, he's a son of a gun. And, you know, and this looks like the movie. It feels like the movie. Right? I like, like, the, like the, the cloak. The cloak version of Shazam. Why not? A little bit different. But we get this perfect origin story. It puts together the wild concepts that came before. It puts Black Adam in the center. Because Black Adam, again, is used so well in DC history at this point. Uh, we can argue that Black Adam is used better in DC Comics more so than Shazam and Captain Marvel. But we kind of understand that now. And even this, when this doesn't quite... And we see it's it's a Justice League. <laughs> it's Justice League, but, you know, it's, it's a Shazam issue. And not, not even now do we have a Captain Marvel Shazam like headlining book. But I will say this. If Alex Ross, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank, George Perez, right? Tom Mandrake, he's our artist for this. John Byrne. I think you guys know what where I'm going Jerry Ordway and yes even Jeff Smith <laughs> all the names I just gave you are absolute Hall of Famers if they cannot get the comic book world excited for Shazam the character truly has passed and that's the saddest part so coming up uh, I want to show off my Guardians of the Galaxy stack and my Black Panther stack as well. There's all the ones I've been working on that I haven't done videos on yet. I implore everyone to do this for some of the characters you're absolutely most curious about. And be patient because it takes time to track down some of these materials, to do a little bit of the research, to have a couple of the conversations. This method of understanding a character's arc and not going through Wikipedia, it's essential. It really is. I believe this method maintains comic book lore, history. It sheds lights on a lot of the names that we have already forgotten. But let me know. If there's any other character you would like to see me do this with, let me know.